So populism, the way that that term is used, essentially just serves to to imply that like sort of a sort of rational presenting centrism, though not really centrism, they tend to present themselves as centrist when they're a lot more firmly on the right, is like the only way forward in anyone and anyone who sort of pr proposes anything else um, that is not that specific within that specific realm is like an irrational um, moron who is like trying to appeal to the people's like base interests, which, which you know, th they think they want, but they really don't very anti-democratic sort of thing, right? Like, you can tell just from the name, like, if you're against populism, what does populism mean? It means of the people, right? It essentially means, like, doing what the people want you to do, or at least saying that you're going to do what the people want you to do. If you look up, like, the dictionary definition or whatever, like, look, look at how honest this dictionary definition is. Political ideas and activities that are intended to give, to get the support of ordinary people by giving them what they want, okay? That's presented as a bad thing. You can tell from the example, right? Their idea is a simple populism. Tax cuts and higher wages. So the idea here being, right, that this is clearly an example that is saying this in a negative sense. So doing things that ordinary people want is sort of presented as, like, by default, a bad thing. That is, like, the crux of the sort of anti-populism rhetoric that you get from people who, like, uh, consider themselves to be, like, the rational the rational, enlightened ones who are in the center of, of it all. Typically, you also get people who, like, define it by, like, it, it's like when a politician, like, um, like, points out problems that the people have, that the elites are causing. But again, another problem with framing that as, as, you know, as irrational and stupid and, like, um, you know, a dishonest strategy is that it's true. That's kind of a bit of a, a bit of a problem to framing it as a bad thing when that is literally true. The elites are the enemy of the people. Absolutely. They are. The things that they are doing absolutely do, do have terrible consequences for normal people. Their interests are diametrically opposed to those of normal people. You know, they're, they're kind of implying there that um, what's good for the elites is actually good for normal people. And anyone who says otherwise is, is um, trying to appeal to like the... Like the like the degenerate whims of the rabble, right? That's that's how they really feel about it. They they won't really say it out loud most of the time, but that's how they feel about it. It's in, it's a fundament it's fundamentally a very anti democratic sort of position. So the way that it works as well is to is like, you know, these people who use the term populism in a derogatory way, they believe that the problems that that these supposed populists point out as being caused by the elite aren't actually problems at all. So that they're not concerned that these people are sort of dishonestly utilizing these problems for their own selfish political gain. That concern is rather that, that these problems are being pointed out at all. And you know, what are those problems? Well, let's look at like the, 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 the current like biggest populist guy, like Donald Trump, right? What are the things that Donald Trump took advantage of? Like, for example, at least I don't think he took advantage of this so much personally, but like think about QAnon. The way that QAnon thinks that like, you know, there's like this political cabal of like elites who are like a bunch of fucking weird that part of that part of QAnon is completely fucking true at least to some extent you, we all know how many how many politicians and billionaires and millionaires etc and how many big media personalities etc were went to Epstein's island there's a list that has all of them Bill Clinton etc etc there's definitely an, a, an element of truth to that QAnon belief the, the thing where we get to like um the thing where we get to the tension is that Donald Trump is also an Epstein guy. So where QAnon falls flat is in taking that idea, which is partly true, and extending it to like this grand conspiracy theory where it's like they're like harvesting kids for their adrenochrome or whatever. <laughs> and and also that Donald Trump is 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 wants to fix all of this rather than the fact that Donald Trump is a is a part of that. Okay? But that, like, the neoliberal in the center would be like, oh, no, that, that, that conspiracy theory is completely wrong, you know? Of course Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton never sexually assaulted anyone, and his ideas are 100%, his political ideas are 100% correct. We love neoliberalism. And if you're against them, you're an irrational populist. So you have Donald Trump, who, like, correctly identified a lot of issues. Or at least his followers who correctly identified a lot of issues. It's another issue that Donald Trump correctly identified are problems with neoliberalism. For example, um... The movement, the moving of U.S. manufacturing to Mexico and China. Donald Trump's solution, Donald Trump's like sort of um 
rhetoric around that was based on racism, right? Like China and Mexico are stealing our jobs. So that's an example of him, of someone correctly identifying a problem and um, be, you know, having an incorrect solution for it. Like, like the correct analysis of that would not be they're stealing our jobs. It would be um, we are we are sort of exporting these jobs to them where, where they are, where, you know, now Chinese people are being exploited to do these jobs for really shitty pay. And, you know, so that we can have like a higher sort of higher level, a higher level in the chain of production, a higher, you know, higher qu qu quantity of consumer goods, et cetera, et cetera, that they don't have the same access to as we do to sort of enable our higher standard of living. Right. It's just like China is stealing our jobs and we got to we got to make them pay. That's it. So it's, it's another example of sort of correctly identifying a problem, but incorrectly analyzing it. But the neoliberal in the middle who uses the term populism in a derogatory sense does not think that's a problem at all, okay? They think that the issue is not, is not Trump's solution to the problem. For them, for the enlightened centrists, the problem for them is the very idea that there is this problem of neoliberalism. For them, there's no problem with neoliberalism. It's fucking awesome in every single sense. So their sort of um, focus on populism itself being bad is disingenuous from in the, in the very beginning. And in this sort of way, they group left, so-called left and right populism together. Well, what that basically means is material analysis, okay? Populism is essentially a material analysis of class conflict at its very core. The notion of populism, right? It's identifying a group, a, power, a group of who are, material, power, who are materially powerful, the elites, and noting that their interests are in counter to those who are not materially powerful, like the, the people, right? So the very idea behind populism being a bad thing, or the way that it's the populism, at least the way that they, they define it, is that material analysis is bad. Class analysis is bad. When it's factually fucking true. And in this way, they group leftists to say, okay, so, you know, there's this class of billionaires who are running the media, who, you know, they literally own the media in many cases. And through this, you know, they are sort of um, spreading a narrative that suits their own material interests, uh, material interests as people of any class do, right? So you have like this sort of idea among neoliberals that that is incorrect. And if you say, if you, if you make this sort of factual material observation of the fact that like rich people, like especially the, the ultra rich, try to perpetuate their power and their, and their wealth in any way possible. You are, a, you are a populist conspiracy theorist, and that is bad or something. They're trying to group anyone who makes that sort of analysis in with, like, like, the, with like the, the worst of, like, the QAnon conspiracy theorist sort of stuff. Or they, they are at least, you know, neoliberals who consider themselves to be in the center lean heavily towards siding with the right more than they do with the left. But still, it's advantageous to them to just sort of group these two things is, is as in as the same. So, you know, they don't care if, like, it's a, a so-called left populist who identifies these problems and earnestly tries to combat them. Because for them, that's just as bad as the right populist who identifies these problems and, um, you know, in a disingenuous way and proposes, like, a racist sort of solution, like the one that I proposed for Trump, that I, that I outlined for Trump, for example, or like, you know, like they frame as a solution something that actually protects the interests of those elites, as Donald Trump also did a lot. Like they don't care about that distinction. They don't care about like the left populist who earnestly tries to advocate for the interests of the so-called people, like the working class, and against the interests of the of the so-called elites being the bourgeoisie. They don't care about the difference. They don't care about if they're actually doing it earnestly or not. The fundamental issue that people who use the term populism in a negative sense have with with what they consider populist is the fact that that they have um correctly identified class conflicts in society in the first place they don't see those things as issues they don't see the billionaire control of the media as issues they don't see massive inequality as issues they don't see like the the root causes of poverty as issues they see these things as as you know at best unlinked or at worst not existing at all for them it's totally fucking fine that jeff bezos literally owns the media that just so happens to to be directed towards an editorial line that happens to favor him, right? They didn't consider that an issue at all. For them, these issues don't exist. There is no conflict between the elite and the so-called people. For them, what serves the elite best serves the so-called people best. Now, obviously, they don't, they don't earnestly believe that, but they advocate for an ideology that like wants to get people to believe that because at the end of the day, they are the servants of these same elites, every single one of them, whether they know it or not. They've, they've consumed the dominant ideology 
that is um, put forward by these elites wholesale and become essentially their unpaid advocates in a lot of cases, if not paid advocates in many more cases. So yeah, if you see someone using populism in a negative sense, they have either, one, consumed this sort of, um, this narrative, this neoliberal centrist sort of narrative of, um, of correctly identifying class conflicts within society as being a negative thing wholesale, or they are one of those people who, who wants people to believe that, you know, talking about class conflict is inherently a, a sort of taboo and it makes you an, a populist who just sort of appeals to the, the base desires of, of the of the um the lower classes who who are not smart enough to know what's good for them they're not smart enough to know that like um that 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 their desires that the things that they want are actually incorrect and they actually need um need a bunch of enlightened neoliberal technocrats to run everything on their behalf with no input from them at all that's essentially what it is. I went over this in my video on neoliberalism when I talked about how neoliberals, like the foundational thinkers of neoliberalism, Hayek especially, were explicitly against democracy. Hayek's um, ideal form of government, which he outlined, was that um, there would be a vote like every 20 years or something, or 15 years or something like that, only among people who own property. Property here meaning capital property, as in the means of production. And the only candidates who there would be would be 40 plus years old um, and who are of significant wealth. That's, that's the sort of thing that the people who are inclined to view populism in a negative sense are also inclined to see as a good sort of political system. They want something like that, or at least a political system that has like that has like a veneer of being more democratic that actually just sort of perpetuates that sort of thing. And that's why, you know, they, they, they throw up a huge fucking fuss when people like Evo Morales or AMLO in Mexico get elected anyway, despite these sorts of political systems that are designed to maintain this sort of enlightened centrist neoliberalism existing, because that's not supposed to be able to happen. So they then attack them and delegitimize them as idiotic populists who are just appealing to the, to the base desires of the, the, the rabble, the idiotic masses who don't know what's good for them, which is, of course, neoliberalism. If you see anyone using populism in, in a negative sense, call them on it. They're just reproducing neoliberal rhetoric. It's a fundamentally anti-democratic position that people are too fucking stupid to know what's good for them, to know what's good for them, to want what's good for them. And, and that they're too fucking stupid to apparently notice the, the obvious fucking thing that, you know, their interests are fundamentally opposed in most cases to those of, of the societal elite. And, and that anyone who dares to point this out is a is an illogical, idiotic populist who is just appealing to the to the base desires of the idiotic rabble. Oh, Jeeves! Jeeves. Get these fucking these fucking pores away from me. Ugh. So yeah, there you go. Populism is based. Well, it's it, it populist analysis is based. Of course, different things can be done with it, but that doesn't mean that, that the analysis itself is wrong. You can, you can form incorrect conclusions based on populist and on this sort of populist analysis, which basically just means class analysis. But the analysis itself is fundamentally correct. That is a fact.